summary of our work is this. We, uh, I was a graduate of the Berean Bible Institute back in 2004. And then th that was the year that I went to Brazil as an intern. Next year, I, I was married to Mariana. Uh, everybody know Mariana? Could you pick her out of a crowd? <laughs> Stand up. Welcome, Mariana. Thank you. Guys, she's taken. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> so, uh, Mariana, we call her Mariana. Do you want to learn the Portuguese way of saying it? Mariana. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds fun. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you can call her whatever. She, she usually comes anyway. <laughs> uh, so, we've been working in Brazil under Word of Grace mission. Some of you have heard of it? Yeah. So, um, three years ago we had a chance to join Things to Come Mission, and we did two years in South Africa, and it was a wonderful time. We learned many things, and we're bringing that back with us to Word of Grace. And so, we've rejoined Word of Grace recently, and we're preparing to head back to Brazil. Not to the same place, though. We're going to a different place. We're going to the big city of Sao Paulo, and we plan to start a ministry there, planting churches there. All right, let's show the pictures. Um, the first one is basically us already. I'm going to hold it like this. Can you see it? Yes. I will try to walk down the aisle a little bit. Anyway, in South Africa, our main work was with these guys. So these were the main pastors that we were working with. There are a few other young men who were part of our ministry there, but... Uh, Elizabeth, you recognize these guys, right? Yeah. The one in the middle, can you tell? Maybe. Actually, I don't know if I know him in the middle. Yeah, okay. <laughs> these were men who were, two of them were pre already graduates of the Bible school that already exists in South Africa with the ministry of the Padaihags. Have you heard of them? Yes. Dean and Shabba Padaihag, yes. Filipino missionaries to South Africa with TCM. Uh, and so these guys were graduates already, and so through them we started two Bible studies, and those became churches soon after. They were very eager. This is one of them. Um, in the picture I show the family, the Kekana family, and also their garage where we were having the meetings. Can you see that? And then, that's in Krugersdorp, which is in the western side of the greater Johannesburg area. And then a little further south, we've got the Maguma family with the church in their garage. Do you see a pattern here? We like garage churches. They have better acoustics. <laughs> but we work where we can, right? And so these two groups are the churches that are um, going on there. We've, we've continued to receive reports in these last months of, of our travels here, how they're doing, and we're very pleased. They always face troubles, and we get to hear about that too, but it's good. We get to pray about the specific needs, right? But anyway, they have continued to minister there in their towns, and so we're so pleased about that. But one of the big blessings of our work in South Africa was Bible school. Now, in, in this picture, I don't know if you can see it clearly. Let me go down a little bit. You can see a temporary structure, and, and us having classes in it, uh, this was, uh, it's basically a big metal shack that was used as a temporary church, and we were also having classes there. What we did was, we would have the students study during the week, and read up on their books and get ready for tests, and then every other Saturday, we'd get together for the whole day. And so in the morning, they'd come, do the tests, and have a couple of lectures. We'd have lunch together, question and answer times, and just fellowship, and then two more lectures, and by the end of the day, they were crawling out of there and saying, no more, I'm done. <laughs> you know, it was a lot of studying, and it was wonderful. Uh, and through this, we trained a, a bunch of people, and here are a couple of pictures of the graduates. But um, the one taking the picture was not in the picture, so I thought, you know, I might as well bring a sample, and she's right there, my wife. Um, we were, I was so blessed, because she was going to help run the school anyway, and she said, I might as well take classes. I wonder if that's the reason she got all the best grades. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. <laughs> but anyway, these are our graduates, and it's just really neat to see what the Lord's doing through each of them. 
Um, a bit of our week was looking like this. Now, I, I know that's not too clear, but if you were to look at the pictures, you would be able to see different homes, different uh, environments in which we were holding Bible studies. And this is just four pictures, so four different homes, but it's a little sample of what we had uh, every day of the week. We were fully packed every evening, going to a different home, having a different Bible study. It was, it was really neat because the people were so thirsty, so eager to learn, and it was in that setting that some of the guys who were training at the Bible school, we would put them to teach and see how they were doing, and it was neat to just uh, mentor them as they were doing that. So. Here's a bunch of kids. We had a lot of children in our churches. They would, uh, they would come from the neighborhood. A lot of them came without their parents, which it's so neat because they went home and they told everything that they were hearing <laughs> to their parents. Right. You know, some of them were going home and saying, there's just really one God right. and one mediator between God and men, Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? And that's not what all of them believe. So... We had little evangelists going home and taking the basic gospel home, and it was just really neat to see them uh, act that way. Now, many of you may wonder, who's, who's this guy? Do you know this guy? If you're familiar, yes, if you're familiar with the work of TCM in Brazil, you know this face. This is uh, Tim Gordon. Tim Gordon, look closely. All right, let me. Oh. This is Joe Campos. Oh, okay. So now, I put him up here because there is a reason we're going back to Word of Grace Mission and going back to Brazil rather than staying with Things to Come Mission. We joined Things to Come and then we, we left and people are like, what did you do? <laughs> no, we didn't do anything. It wasn't planned from the beginning. There is a need in Brazil in the greater grace movement of 27 churches spread out in Brazil. Wow. There is a need for more unity, more collaboration, more sharing of resources. And he and I are, are thinking very much the same in regards to that. Joe and I have the same mind, <coughs> same heart, just to say, hey folks, we're all teaching the same thing. Let's help each other. Let's go forward instead of backwards, right? And so there was a bit of division in the years past, and, and him and I were working against that. Now, this book here, maybe you can't read the reading, but do you see this blue book? Yes. Does it look familiar? Yes. yes. Pastor Dan Webb wrote Basic Bible Doctrines, one of the books I most use in ministry. And for years we didn't have it translated. I was just using it in English and translating on the go. And I said to our newest uh, missionary, his name is Wessel, and he's a translator. He's translating materials from, from the Grace Library into Portuguese, so we can use it to set up our own Bible schools there. I'll talk about Wesu in a minute, but anyway, he translates this book, and so now we have basic Bible doctrines, oops, in, uh, we have it in Portuguese, and this was the day that Joe Campos received his copy, and he's like posting on Facebook and promoting it, and that's the kind of unity we want to push, the, the kind of sharing of resources where we can all use materials that help one another in the faith. So basically, that's why I put this picture on here. For those who are not very familiar with the history of Word of Grace Mission, here we have a picture of Warren and Shirley Kuyper. They were some of the pioneer missionaries. I call them Grandpa and Grandma. Hi. They, they were my grandparents. They were in Brazil since 1969. And then uh, Grandpa passed away in, in 2011. And so... Uh, Grandma's still well, and she's, she's actually living with my parents down in the southern part of Brazil. Speaking of them, this is them. Now, you've heard of them, right? Bernardo and Carol Kressmeyer, real tall guy. <laughs> yeah, that's my dad. So they are ministers in the southern part of Brazil, um, and they have planted four churches. They're working on the fifth and the sixth church, and as well as, actually, as of recently, I've asked him, just uh, last week, hey dad, how's that fifth church going? And he's saying, hey, I'm practically not there anymore. It still needs a little structure, but it's being run by the locals. And we always, as missionaries, we're always looking for that point where the locals will step up and say, we're going to run this ministry. And so uh, that's basically marking the end of the church planting. It's not quite ready yet, but it's soon. Um, here, here's a picture of Wesu. 
This is our newest guy on the block. He's uh, Wezo and Daisy. Our, our, they've actually been trained with us when we were uh, working in Brazil before we went to South Africa. We were working with these people. And they have grown so much, and Wezo is so good. He is so uh, efficient at translating uh, that I said, you know, you, you have to join the board. We need a translator like you. And he has been doing already amazing work. By the way, this is the picture of his prayer card. We should have several out there on the table. And if you would like to pray for someone, oftentimes missionaries, they come, and as they present their ministry, one of the things that they would like, aside from just that support in prayer, just that caring of what's going on, and being, you know, brothers and sisters being together in the effort, they would like financial support. Isn't that the norm? <coughs> we feel that we are not in need of asking for financial support at this time. We feel that the Lord has provided for our needs, and yet, if there is someone that you would like to support, this is someone that I would highly encourage you to think about and pray about. The reason is simple. We need, as missionaries in Brazil, we need a good base of books. You know, I have to apologize to my brother Paul Ballback um, because I kind of raided his table back there. Did you notice that? Yeah. <laughs> He's not here, so you're all right. Yeah, I know. I was, was going to say, I don't see him, so whoo, I'm safe. But, but I put our display on his table with all the books. And um, it's just so important to have good, solid books for the training of leaders who are going to teach the Word and teach it correctly. They're going to understand what they're talking about because they have done their homework and they've done their training. We want to set up a Bible school in Brazil, but without the books, it's kind of hard to do it all. That's right. We have enough books, I think, for a, a full, full first year, but we don't have enough books for a whole two-year course or three-year course. And so that's why this guy is still very much in need of our support, and I do encourage you to, to pray about that, if you would. Uh, please feel free to take his prayer cards, throw it on your fridge, or if you have several, the way we do it, because we have several prayer cards from all the different missionaries we love to pray for, and so we just have a napkin holder, and we put them all there, and every day we pray for one, and put them in the back, and we don't clean the mouths with those napkins. No, that's not what we do. Uh, anyway, that's a good system. Um, as far as our work ourselves, I mentioned the Bible school that we'd like to start up, what we learn in South Africa, we want to bring to Brazil. But one of the things that's been on our hearts is the most populated, the, the bigger cities. We feel that there's a lot of souls in one place, and it's sort of the Lord's way of making things easy. And Brazil is very populated. It's the fifth most populated country of the world, and its top three cities have contacts. As you can see, I, I know it's not too clear, it's a little too far, but these people that you see in the pictures our contacts, families that are waiting for us to come and to minister with them and to start churches in Brazil in the top three cities of Brazil. That would be Sao Paulo, the largest, Rio de Janeiro, you've, you've heard of that one, right? Because of the movie with the blue bear, and, yeah? And uh, also uh, Belo Horizonte, that's the third biggest. And so each of these represents contacts that we have already in, in those uh, places. And it's just so neat to see how the Lord worked that out. Because we left for South Africa saying, Lord, we don't know anybody in these cities, and yet we feel this calling to go to these cities. Well, He takes care of these, doesn't He? So we're just pleased at how the Lord works. Uh, for those who are more visual, like the map, like to see the markers, I put together this map of, of Brazil, and some of the yellow and red markers are the target areas for future church plants. The blue markers on the map represent existing grace churches, the 27 I mentioned. Do you see how spread out they are? You may think, oh, it's just a, a, an easy drive. So what I did is I took this area right here, this small area, and I blew up here. And just so you know, from this point to this point, you see how my finger didn't move much? <laughs> From here to here, from Sao Paulo to Rio, 
it takes about five and a half, six hours driving. Uh, my parents live down here and we will be going to Sao Paulo. And so from this yellow marker down here, all the way to Sao Paulo, it's about nine hours driving. That's how far we will be from my parents and from what we would call home, where we grew up and, and so forth. Um, so yeah, it's, it's quite a big country. Did you know Brazil is larger than the continental U.S.? Most people don't realize that. They know it's big, just not exactly how much. So you got Alaska, and I think that's cheating. <laughs> I'm teasing. But because of Alaska, the U.S. is much bigger. But uh, yeah, if it weren't for that, Brazil would be a little bigger than the continental U.S. So that's why these distances are so great. Anyway, um, if you would like to help, guys, please, the thing that's most important to us is prayer. It makes a huge difference, yes. especially when uh, Americans decide, let's do a mission trip and send some other Americans to the field, right? No, it's easy. I'm just joking about that, just for our sister here. But um, it's, it's really amazing how much of a boost we get when we know folks are praying for us. They care. Yeah. They want to know what's going on. They write emails. They ask questions. And so, if you'd like to keep in touch and do, you know, I, I walked in and I noticed out there a map and uh, several prayer cards of several missionaries. Uh, some of those guys are dead, by the way. Maybe you could uh, review that. But anyway, <laughs> I noticed some of the several of the current missionaries. They are. They are people, they have emotions, they go through struggles, and it's just really neat to encourage them. Write them a little now and then and ask them, keep up with them. They have, uh, nowadays, have you heard of WhatsApp? It's an app for your phone and, and you can text with it, you can send voice recordings, and you can call and video call and you can do a lot of stuff with it. It's encrypted. So some of the missionaries out there who are in countries where it's a little dangerous to be in, uh, through that means it's safe to talk and it's just neat for, for, for them if they, you know, if you have their number and you just say, hey, I'm praying for you today. That makes a lot of difference. So those are ways to help, financially too, of course, but the way to do that, as you may know, is to write checks to the mission, not to the name of the missionary. That, that confuses thing. It's, it, it's difficult to handle that kind of check, just so you know. Speaking on behalf of all missionaries, all right? Um, but here's a question for you guys. Have you seen uh, what the world looks like today in terms of religions? I'm, I'm wrapping up here, but I did want to just ask you to look at the world as a whole. Have you seen a, a, an image like this? The breakdown, the pie chart of the religions of the world? Yeah? So, here's the question. How many people are Christians and I say so-called Christians in the world today. Of all that is considered Christian, how many percent? <coughs> About 31 percent. So we're almost one-third down, two-thirds to go, right? <laughs> Here's the real question. How many of the people of the world are saved? Because if you look at this, this bigger chunk of the, the Christians would be this part here, this one-third of this map. The bigger chunk of it is the Roman Catholic uh, religion. Do they teach salvation by simply placing your faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross? His burial, His resurrection, He took care of it. You believe it and you're saved. Is that what is taught? So what about all these other groups? One of them is, is the Orthodox, the other one is the Protestant, the other one the Independent. When you go and do the research and study each of these major groups to see what they're made out of, the number of Christian groups out there teaching the Gospel of Grace is small. It's very small. Now what is the death rate? One apiece. One apiece, that's good. <laughs> All right, let's break it down in minutes. How many people of the 7.7 7 
A million people alive today. How many are dying each minute? Did you know that it's over a hundred? And in just a few minutes I've been talking, several hundred people have passed away and their eternity is sealed now. There is no changing it. If they trusted the Lord and according to this, there is so much teaching going on that is not, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me, right? There's, there's a lot of saying, no, you can go through, through Allah and, and Muhammad. There's a lot of them saying, ah, there's many guys. Why, why restrict yourself to one? Choose one you like. Worship him. Does that save people from their sins? And so there is a huge need, and I just wanted to bring this out. A couple more things to bring out. The world population. Have you seen a map like this? It's a little different. Instead of the actual world, it shows little circles showing the size of the population of that particular country. In Asia, the ones in green, does anything jump out at you? China and India, right? Massive countries. There is a huge need in these countries all over the world. Um, the greatest ministries that we know of that have gone out and have reached the world have not reached more than 30 countries. So in a sense, there is a huge need for the gospel of the grace of God to be taken to different parts of the world. And oftentimes I ask myself, well, how can we do that? Even individually, but also collectively, the, the saints in general, how can we unite and do something about this? There aren't enough workers. Now I'm jumping to a different kind of a map here. Have you seen this map of the US? It shows the actual area, but it, it, it also has spikes. Do you know what those are? Population spikes. Can you tell? You look and you see out east, you see a big spike there for? New York. New York. What about in this area right here? Where you are now? That's a huge spike. Chicago is the third most populated metropolitan area of the U.S. Something like nine million, right? Yeah. Seven. Seven. No, no, I'm talking about the metropolitan area. Like when you look from above and you can't see the lines of what town is what town. And it's, it's just massive. It's like a huge city spread out like that, right? Anyway, it's, let's, let's go with between 7 and 13. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> But there's a lot of people. And I think someone must have been praying and saying, Lord, we don't have enough people to send out to all the different villages and towns and then farm areas into the, the country here and abroad. We don't have enough people. And the Lord says, don't worry, I'll fix that for you. And he bunches up a, a bunch of them in, in places and he says, look, see what I've done? Now, you need fewer workers. I'm making it easy for you. <laughs> um, another fact that's interested me so much, here in the United States, you see how I'm talking about the United States, right? I, I'm just hoping to challenge you a little bit because I feel tremendously challenged to go to Brazil and do work there. But there is a need everywhere. And so I'm not saying, oh, just think about Brazil and forget the rest. No, guys, do pray for us as we work in Brazil. But continue to pray for your own nation because there is a huge need here. And if you're thinking, well, what about the rest of the world? Did you know that over a million international students are coming to the U.S. every year to study here? And they're staying two, three, four, five years. <coughs> and then they go back, most of them. Not all of them. But they go back to their home country. And of that million coming every year, about half of them are from which countries? China. Kind of easy there, right? China and India, yeah. What an opportunity. Uh, imagine a, an outreach towards the, the youth, the, the students, out in the colleges. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, they go through a lot. But what do they need the most? They need love. They need that attention. And the international students especially, they're coming from a different place. They're struggling with the language barrier. 
they're struggling with the way things are, it's different. They're struggling with the fact that they don't even know where to get their basic things done. Where do you go for it to buy this or get that? They're struggling because they're far away from their families, <coughs> from everything that is familiar. They're lonely. And in a sense, I feel that that's the Lord saying, Guys, even in this regard, I'm making it so easy for you. Look, I bring a bunch of people here, now they're needy. Show them some love. It's easy. <laughs> I get excited. Never, never mind my excitement. But please, consider the need around us. We are not done, guys. We are not done. We cannot sit back and, and say, Oh, we've reached most of the world. So if everyone, if anyone is not saved, it's really because they just don't want to. And we understand. People reject the Lord. We can't choose that for them. But... Has everyone out there who would receive him had a chance to hear the gospel? And I believe the answer is we still got a lot of work to do. So it's, it's my prayer that through this kind of information we will be challenged to go out there and to say, Lord, in our generation we're going to try to make a difference and be relevant eternally. Amen? Amen. Thank you, guys. If you want to sign up for our news... There's a, a sign-up sheet back there. We do emails. It's cheap, right? So that's how we have to do it. But uh, if you want to sign up for our email updates, and you haven't already, there's a sign-up sheet. There are some prayer cards. If we don't have enough, we apologize. This is our end of the trip. So I might have too few, but we can make more. All right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.